Hey, uh, Dan here on Thursday, uh, March 14th. Um, before I get started, let me just show you this down here. I'm not going to always be using this, but I have been looking at it um, recently just to kind of get a sense of what's happening. Let me stretch this out of the way. There's a few different indicators here. Um, first of all, the MACD, um, that's Moving Average Convergence Divergence, and you can look up an article on this that I wrote uh, several years ago, and the indicator hasn't changed, so the content of the article is still relevant. Um, it's really a combination trend momentum indicator. It's, it's the average of it's the average of the difference between two moving averages. That's the one line. And then the other line is the moving average of that first line. So you're going to get this crossover. It's a lagging indicator. And, and if you're not, again, I'll say it. One line is the difference between two moving averages. How far apart are, are they? That's line one. Line two is the exponential moving average of line one. What it measures is, again, it's a momentum indicator and also a trend indicator. Trend, which way is it going, up or down? Uh, momentum, how steep is the curve? Here versus here. Okay, so that's um, MACD. Rate of change is just literally just that, how what rate are the prices changing? So you also want to see this moving in a positive direction when it um, confirms, when it's moving in the same direction as MACD, that's known as a good thing. Okay, but you will see some divergences and I might be going into a little more detail than, uh, than you're looking for, but that's kind of the nature of my job. Here, for example, um, back last year, look at, um, at the rate of change. Even though the, the stock market was still going higher, the S&P, the rate of change was starting to drift lower. So was MACD starting to drift lower. The market peaked here. So we had a negative divergence quite a ways before um, the market started trending lower. So these were indicating they were forecasting a problem. And so where does this, and you can use this indicator, it's actually two different indicators. You can use them to, you know, to look at any of your stocks. Um, and so here, what do we have? Well, relative to this low, let me get this on the old price chart here. Relative to this low, this last low is a much higher one. Now these are starting to, they're continuing to move higher again. So I'm going to drop this down. Sorry for the, uh, for the eye candy here. I look at stocks in a lot of different ways. Here's one to blow your mind. How about that one? Okay, so anyway, but back on point here. So typically, I'll just kind of leave this minimized because I don't think you, you know, it's not important to dwell on it on every single, uh, on every single stock. I mean, we don't want to turn this into MACDRateOfChangeMentor.com. But just know that there are some secondary indicators that you can watch um, that will really help you in your analysis, basically in your confidence in the market. Okay, so um, with that said, um, what I don't want you to be, I got a really nice email from a stock market mentor, an option market mentor member, um, who just told me he's just absolutely been, you know, really, really killing it this year, doing a great job. I won't mention him by name, but you know who you are, and I'll just acknowledge you publicly. Awesome job. Um, he noted that back on February 21st or 22nd, when the market was starting to uh, tank a little bit, I had just said, you know what, this kind of pullback is healthy. I want you to, you know, stay in. Don't turn bullet or don't turn bearish just because the market's pulling back. This is what you want. And he said that he stayed long and he's really glad he did. He's made a bunch of money. Okay, that's fine. Hang on just a sec. Okay, that's the sound of me patting myself on the back. Now this, that's the sound of me applauding this person because you're the ones that pull the, you're the one that pulls the trigger. You listen to my analysis. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. It's always honest. 
uh, but I do get it wrong sometime and ultimately you are the one that determines what you're going to do. So don't give me too much credit when you're uh, when you make money and I happen to be right. But also don't give me too much blame um, if I happen to be wrong, because again, you're the one. Anyway, with that said, it got me thinking about this concept of being a sold out bull. And what that is, um, the, you just raise your hand if this describes you. You really think the market's going higher. Uh, you're really bullish on the market, but you're finding out that you've sold um, a lot of the stocks um, that have been working. You've sold them a while ago because you thought they were topping. Now they're even higher than when you sold them, and you're wondering whether you should be buying them back. You're feeling a little frustrated because you know how much money you could have been making if you'd still been in. And so you're, a, you're in a situation where you're literally sold out. You've sold all or most of your stocks, and you still think the market's going higher. Now, how many uh, of you does this describe? Yeah, all the hands. Not all the hands, but a lot of the hands went up. So... We got to be always mindful of that, that literally the trend is your friend. Anybody can say that, but something else that I've been talking about lately, and that is scaling out, scaling in. I mentioned this just yesterday, I believe, that if you don't have, if you don't have the exposure to equities that you want, don't just go pile in. Just embrace the fact that, you know, you haven't participated much in the rally and if you were fully invested right now and the market continued higher, that would be a lot better off than if you were just kind of gradually scaling in and putting money to work a little at a time. That would be better. However, if you do pile in and the market does not continue higher, that would be worse than if you just scaled in a little bit and then the market rolled over and then you're saying like, oh, well, maybe this is going to be my buying opportunity. So you have a little bit of exposure. You're underwater on it. You're losing a little bit of money because you bought it. What may be the top? We don't know. I don't think so. But now you've got money to put to work at lower levels. So I want you to be thinking like that and just think in terms of a risk manager. I talk about this all the time, um, but it's because it never goes out of style. Okay. Um, it never goes out of style. You measure the risk of missing out on the upside, that is by being in cash, versus the risk of getting really hurt on a downside move, that is being fully invested in the market. It's a sliding scale of risk. Sometimes the risk is greater that you're going to miss out on the upside. Other times the risk is greater that you're going to be really hurt. And so um, and it depends on the stocks. It depends on the markets. Right now, I would just say this. Let me go to this T2108 indicator. Um, and we'll look at that. This is a, the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average. We're seeing, you know, you see this little climb here. And yes, that's confirming the S&P 500 um, March higher. I think I just mentioned that yesterday. But make no mistake about it. This has been diverging here as the S&P has gone higher. It has been diverging. So, you know, it's a little bit of a yellow flag. Um, not enough to get out of equities, but you just, you know, temper your enthusiasm. Recognize that this is a wall of worry. We got a lower high here in this ratio of new four-week highs over new four-week lows. We, the higher the number, the stronger the market. So we got a lower number here than we did here, even though the market is higher than it was here. So these are two negative divergences that at least bear noting. You just want to keep, keep that in mind. Um, so let me get to this, the Dow Jones. Um, I noticed something earlier on CNBC. This is the first 10-day winning streak that the Dow's had um, since like 1996. And frankly, you know, again, breadth is narrowing a little bit. Um, sorry about that. Breadth is narrowing a little bit with this, uh, you know, 40 day moving average of the percentage of stocks above or the percentage of stocks above their 40 day moving average. So breadth is narrowing a little bit, but it's really, um, you know, it's really not hurting the Dow. So this is to me a function of the obvious, which everybody's talking about. And that is, and you got to be thinking about it in your own household. Um, and in, on your own financial sheets, where do I put my money to actually get it to grow? You're not going to put it in bonds. 
You don't have any other option except stocks. Maybe in real estate, fine, but we're not comparing stocks to real estate. We're comparing stocks to other financial industries. Uh, and if you want to make money in real estate, buy some of the home building stocks. Then you don't have the mortgage. Um, so the bottom line is we're, we're really just going higher here. I would, I'm going to stick with my 1600 price target on the S&P as not a maximum price target, but as a minimum price target, I think. Let me go back to it. Um, I really think that if we get up to 1600, that's just an, it's an obvious sell point. It's an obvious point where traders are going to say, you know what, um, I think I'll just go ahead and take profits. You look at what happened back here, about 1450-ish or so. Then when we blew right through, we didn't blow right through 1500. We paused here a little bit. Now we're on the way higher. So you're going to get the same thing, I believe, at 1600 in the S&P. And so I would just really focus on holding the positions that you have unless they're telling you, sell me. That's different than you telling yourself, ooh, I think I better sell. You want to get some objective um, signal from, uh, from the stock that it's time to sell. Here, Dow Jones Transports continue to move higher. And by the way, the VIX, that's the Volatility Index, otherwise known as the Fear Index, at least in my household, as well as many others, um, it's really low, like it's at multi-year lows. So what does the Fear Index indicate? It indicates how much... Um, traders are interested in actually like hedging their portfolios. How many, what's the money that they're putting into puts, you know, um, that, excuse me, S&P uh, 100, that's the OEX puts, stuff like that. Well, the last time the VIX was down at this level was around 207, 2007, which is kind of where the market petered out. So there are a lot of reasons for saying like, wow, I want to be cautious. I want to be careful about this market. And another one is, and I'll get to the charts in a second, but it's important that you just kind of understand these things. Another real big brick in the wall of worry. I've, I saw it today, like almost all day on CNBC. It seemed like somebody was talking about the Fed, how what happens when the Fed starts, um, you know, reining in their bond buying and they start quote tightening up then what that what's that going to do to the market well when they do that the market's probably going to roll over at least for a certain amount so the question you need to ask yourself is self are they going to do it tomorrow okay i don't think so are they going to do it next week absolutely not are they going to do it next month um no i don't know when they're going to do it but it ain't on any calendar that I have. And so until that time, just know that these comments about the Fed tightening or shifting uh, policy and things like that, um, those are very real risks, but they're macro risks. Those are the risks that some guy who's managing um, you know, $300 billion is going to have to start anticipating now. You and me, if only. We don't have to anticipate that stuff. So anyway, I want you just to be, you know, true to the trend. Now, railroad index continuing to move higher. Union Pacific rails continuing to move higher. We've been taught, and these are just the types of stocks that I'm talking about where if you were long this earlier, like on the breakout, and you know, I've been talking about the rails for quite a while, but if you're long this on the breakout, then frankly, if you just look at the chart, there's no reason for you to not still be long. There's been nothing in this price action that's given you any indication that it's time to sell this. Nothing in the MACD rate of change indicator that tells you that it's time to sell this. So with that said, is it time to sell it now? Well, I don't really see any reason to, to sell. Not when the trend is this high. You want to be looking at all of your stocks this way. I promise you it's going to help you stay in stocks, in winning stocks longer. Now, J.B. Hunt, um, you know, we've been watching for this. I just mentioned it yesterday um, about this breakout from our flag pattern. Now it's just kind of stalled here a bit, but you'd expect that um, after the kind of move that it had yesterday. There's nothing wrong with this trend. It's just a little overextended. Would I buy it now? No, I wouldn't. I'd be waiting for more of a pullback. Um, and you'll get some kind of pullback or sideways drift. 
Would I be selling it? No, not if my reason for being in it was this. If your reason for being in it was because of this little breakout right here, then sure, go ahead and sell it. But hopefully you've got a longer term uh, time horizon. So, okay, NASDAQ 100 still forming a little flag pattern there, not a big deal. Uh, the equal weighted index drifts higher though. Okay, so you can see this bifurcation and it all really still has to do with Apple. Now, um, let's talk about some financials here. Um, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Um, federal government says they need to revise their capital plans and they got to do them by September. Okay, that news came out this afternoon and now they're trading down just a bit. I want you though, pay less attention to the news. You know that it's out there, that's fine. Pay more attention to how the stocks trade in reaction to that news. Um, so if Goldman Sachs remains say above the 50 day moving average, I think this pullback is a buying opportunity. In fact, the fact that Goldman Sachs is only down to this level after hours, I think it's going to be a buying opportunity for this. And JP Morgan, for crying out loud, this stock wasn't letting you in really. Got a chance here. Um, I think maybe tomorrow, again, if the stock is only down to here, if this is all it's down, um, it's down, uh, I'm looking at the ticker right now like 24 cents. Goldman Sachs um, down just a hair too. So I think with this type of news out, if these stocks continue to be strong, that's your buying opportunity because it's one less uh, potential problem um, to deal with. So now American Express, um, they raised their dividend by 15% and they're buying back stock like 4 billion worth. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with this trend, is there? It's a nice volatility expansion. Um, similarly, Bank of America, which has been just kind of grinding around in this space. I remember mentioning this. Kind of, you want, kind of wanted to wait for maybe some kind of pullback. Well, this isn't giving us that. I think it's a six billion dollar buyback um, that they're doing. So these banks, you know, now that they got the uh, the Fed out of their way a little bit. Um, they're starting to do things with their money. So Bank of America probably break out here tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to go scream. Any little pullback as close to the 50 day moving average as you can get it. Um, that's what you want to be doing. Now one other financial and that's Visa. I'm telling you, just get ready for a blast off here. This stock has been trickling sideways for so long. It's got an uptrending series of higher lows. So watch for Visa to start taking off. Okay, just a couple home builders to keep in mind. Um, they just continue to drift higher. There's your trend. If you've been long this, if you've been long the XHB, the only time that you might have been uh, close to being shaken out would have been here on this big pullback. But just the following day, this started to move higher. So far, the trend is intact. Um, Lennar little flag pattern here. I would look for higher prices um, from this stock. And here's this indicator down here. You've got the moving average, convergence, divergence, crossing, um, you know, above this nine, you know, nine uh, day line here. And the rate of change is also starting to move up as well. So this is pretty bullish um, to me. It's a real nice bullish development. So look for higher prices from, uh, from Lennar as well and then just one other one and that's DR Horton. This is kind of what I think Lennar is going to look like in a few days. So DR Horton is also breaking out. So I like seeing the home builders continue to move higher because one area um, of employment where they're light in is construction work. Um, you know that just a lot of jobs were shed. Now after all these years a lot of the skilled labor um, has kind of moved on to other things, which means that there's a lot of unskilled labor there. Um, also, um, um, a lot of the uh, Hispanics, which I'm out here on the West Coast, I don't know what it's like on the East Coast, but there was a big, massive Hispanic community that's in the, in the construction um, area. Well, a lot of those folks went home. They'll ultimately be coming back. We know this. 
Um, but because of that, there's really a demand for workers. There's a demand for that. So what's that going to do to the employment picture? It's actually going to make it um, a little bit rosier, I should say. So when you look at the home builders, don't just look at them from a standpoint of wondering whether you should buy a house or not. Look at them as an indication of the overall direction or the you know outlook for um, for the economy and when I see the home builders moving higher still you know after all this time um, I like it so it makes me want to be long and stay long equities now let's look at a couple that I haven't looked at in a while these industrials um, Emerson Electric this looks to me like it's at a really good buy point right here right at the 50-day moving average if you're looking you know looking at stocks you've got your cash on the sidelines and you're saying for crying out loud man everything's just going higher and higher Dan uh, what the heck do I do well look at Emerson because it's actually pulled back to give you a decent buy point and it's been consolidating for a while similarly um, Tyco not a particularly good buy point right now, but potentially, sure. Look at the stock drifting sideways. Look at these Bollinger Bands. Hey, the more I compress this, the tighter those bands get. Look, a volatility squeeze. Um, but you can see how this is just trickling sideways. Um, I don't know when earnings are, but you're going to want to watch for that. Um, but this is a stock that the, the uptrend is pretty clear. Look at the 50-day moving average. Okay, now um, a couple ammo names. I mentioned Alliant Tech Systems, ATK, um, yesterday as a, uh, an ammo play on uh, ammunition. Nice breakout here. I think this ultimately moves higher. You can see the big reversal that it's had, but this side, sideways trend, um, in my view, is done, and now the stock's moving up. Another one that uh, Seahawk, one of our esteemed uh, colleagues in stock market mentor in the forum there, uh, told me because I asked last night guys if there's another ammo trade out there let me know um, and uh, Seahawk mentioned Olin that they own Winchester and as a guy who who likes to shoot hot lead here and there um, Winchester big maker of ammunition I know I like it in my gun actually I like it going out of my gun on the business end so this you know fairly illiquid stock um, trades half a million shares today but this is a stock that I think ultimately is going to continue to drift higher as well so those are a couple for you to look at you know always watch Cabela's but that you know stock made a massive move and it's just kind of consolidating I don't know whether you should buy it here or not I sure wouldn't I'd just be afraid to um, but anyway so those are a couple for you now um, I mentioned this uh, yesterday, I believe, um, Comcast. This is a stock that I think goes higher. You can look at the trend. The trend is, is pretty clear, but I like the fact that it's been consolidating for a month. It tends to do that just before it moves higher. Um, so I like the fact that this is flattening a bit because it's healthy, but watch for the stock to move higher. Now, skilled healthcare. I mentioned this yesterday, my quote, goofy little stock. Um, that had been bumping up against the 200-day moving average. Watch for that to break out. Um, the stock traded 370,000 shares today, well above average. We'll look at the daily chart, and I saw some mention of it in the forum that maybe I moved the stock um, by my mention. I, I highly doubt it. It would be flattering to know that I could do that um, if I thought that I could do that. Then I would buy stuff during the day and talk about it tonight. Actually, I'm kidding. I would never do that. But the point is, I think the stock was just ready to break out. And that's what it did. The stock, I looked and there's no real news on it. I mean, they've, you know, um, a, a couple fundamental pieces of data recently, but nothing in my view that would really juice the stock like this. So if you got long the stock this morning, congratulations, you're making a nice trade. I would just suggest sticking with it as long as it uh, keeps working. Now, um, Celgene, um, it's the little engine that's actually the big engine that could. It's the big engine that can. Um, it just continues to move higher as well. Very, very extended, um, but that's what strong stocks do. They get extended and then become more extended, more extendeder. Okay, so I would just 
you know, hang on to this one. Uh, would I buy it here? No. But there's just because something is not a stock that you want to buy right now, that doesn't mean that it's a stock that you should sell. Most days, frankly, in any given stocks trading, they're not really good days to buy. They're either good days to hold or good days to be happy that you're not long the stock. Uptrending stocks, you make your money not where you buy, not where you, where you sell, but what happens in between the buy and the sell. Right now, we're still on the in-between stage here. So let's look at some tech here. SanDisk, I've been for lack of a better term, pumping this lately. I, I love this um, uh, flash memory trade, so obviously of a lot of other people because it's gone up quite a bit between here, between there, and, and where we are now. But look at the weekly chart. Um, it's had this volatility squeeze here, breaking out to multi-year highs. And so this is a stock, again, I wouldn't buy it right here. Look how how extended it is. It's been up for like four days in a row, way outside the upper band. But this is what strong stocks look like. So if you're long, and I am, um, I wouldn't be selling it. I would just let the stock, um, just let the stock do um, what it's supposed to do. And that is just continue to trend higher. Now, Adobe, uh, mentioned this yesterday, a little kind of a flag pattern here. Um, that continues. Would I buy it here? No, because it's still just in this flag pattern. And for all we know, this flag pattern may actually turn out to be a short-term top. Stock may never actually get out above it and may instead drift lower. This would be one of those that I would say, the only reason I'm covering it is because I want you to watch it. Just want you to keep watching it. But it's not something that I would buy right now. Now, VMware is kind of interesting. Um, you know, in their last earnings statement, they actually gave some pretty conservative guidance. And why would we know this? Well, because the stock went from there down to there. Continued lower, just really stinking up the joint. Well, now the company comes out and says, hey, you know, looks like uh, business is really good. So they gave a strong forecast at some conference on uh, Wednesday and you can see what's happened. The stock's starting to scream higher. Would I buy it here? Um, no, but I would consider it on, on a pullback. You look at EMC, which owns a big slug of VMware. It's also uh, moving higher. So this stuff, and I know Maria Bartiromo, if I recall correctly. Actually, I'm not sure if I recall correctly. I don't know if it was her, but somebody was on CNBC yesterday talking about how the data storage business is, um, yeah, it's expanding, something like it's expanding at a faster rate than IT budgets are um, contracting. Um, I don't know whether that's true. I know she doesn't like just make stuff up, um, so there has to be some, uh, some data for that. All I know is this, the stocks continue to drift lower, lower highs, lower lows. Well, now we finally got a higher high. This is one that I would look on any kind of a pullback. If you want to be taking a stock that looks like it's about done going down, wait and get this on a pullback. I think you're going to do all right. Um, Google, last but not least, um, I got a comment, a question yesterday from somebody in the option market mentor forum. Hey, do you think um, it's time to take action on Google? And I said I really didn't. Um, I still don't, but I think we're pretty close to it because if we just draw a line, um, let me get to a line. I was about to draw you a box there. Forget about this little pullback and that. Just draw a line along all of these lows here. You can see that Google's about to touch that. So if this pattern continues, um, you know, tomorrow, which is expiration Friday or Monday, we could get a nice move to the upside. So don't lose track of Google. I don't think you're late. Well, you're late in buying this stock, but I don't think you're too late in buying this stock. And it'll be also real interesting to see how Samsung's um, release goes tomorrow because if it goes, you know, they're on Android. Um, so that will certainly help Google's price. Um, but also, and I'll leave you with this, watch how Apple trades tomorrow. Watch how the reviews are for the Samsung Galaxy and over the next week or so. If the reviews are really good and they're selling a bunch of them, 
and Apple starts moving higher, that's your signal to buy Apple because it's rising in the face of bad news. That's an indication that all of this stuff has already been factored in to the price of the stock. If on the other hand, um, the Galaxy is uh, well received and Apple moves lower, well then you definitely don't want to be long Apple. If the Galaxy is not well received and Apple moves higher, that's your opportunity to buy Apple. If Apple is not well received and Apple moves lower, that's an indication that there's something really wrong with the stock because even though this much ballyhooed um, new device from um, Samsung had bad reviews and maybe it's not going to do so well, Apple continues to trade lower. So this is really the, um, what I've really just described is um, behavioral analysis. You just see how the market behaves uh, according to news, according to news flow. So um, anyway, I hope this helps uh, you guys. Um, if you're really, you know, if you're having a hard time in the market, I would just suggest that you stop trading and just start holding. In other words, the stocks that you own, as long as they're going up, then just keep owning them. Don't be so quick to pull the trigger on any little jig in the stock. You're going to get that stuff every day. It's called open market. So, okay, I'm not going to be around um, tomorrow in the forum, uh, but I will have the weekend update out over the weekend.